Greetings, everyone. So welcome to today's webinar. So it's a very absolute pleasure for us. And I'm truly glad to introduce one of our esteemed authorized IoT solution provider partner, Unabis. So please say hello to us, Jonathan. Hello everyone, this is Jonathan. Uh, I am the Managing Director of Unibis Office Asia. I'm here, I'm glad to be part of this uh, webinar. I shall speak later. Mm. Okay, so, uh, so before we get ready, so I just want to let everybody know for today. So we will be having a introduction of the uh, things we're going to talk about is about like smart buildings. And we wanted to talk further about the possibility to enhance the overall building performance, as well as bringing like some greener outcomes. So in today's webinar, there will be two sessions separately. So first section will be Maosai as a digital professional digital sensing provider of devices. Maosai will showcase our popular devices equipped with advanced technology and high automation. These devices are designed to optimize performance in smart buildings backed by successful case studies. Additionally, uh, Woonabees will share insights on Milesight devices into their projects, providing further understanding of potentials for achieving greener outcomes. So if you do have any questions in the process in the webinar, you can always put your questions in the chat box or the Q&A box to let us know. And we will be having our support from both Mausa and Unibase to provide with you the answers, okay? So I think we can get started. Firstly, let me just quickly introduce the four sessions we'll be bringing for today by Mausa. First of all, just a very quick introduction for somebody who didn't know Mausai before. And we will be focusing on talking about like what's the differences in between the smart buildings and our conventional buildings. So I will be presenting some of the very popular devices right now we're currently utilizing in the, some specific scenarios of smart buildings right now. And I will be talking about how do we use those devices into our solutions. And then uh, there would be some success stories provided to let you know and to have further references. So besides that, I want to, to further talk is uh, all the materials uh, we will be sharing with you after this webinar through the follow-up email. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to let us know, okay? First of all, just a very quick introduction of who is Milesight since I think most of you guys has already known us. So Milesight is a fast growing high tech company delivering smart IoT and video surveillance products with a focus on IoT technologies, such as what we mentioned, the AI, 5G and LoRaWAN as well as we are currently providing some other technologies such as MB, uh, IoT or CAT-M stuff. Since 2011, we have got the sensing capabilities and more advanced IoT insights. So now we currently have more than 600 employees and we are currently have over 120 partners all around the world right now in helping us to build a more connected world with our better insights. So it is our main concept of bringing all of the world into a better and more connected uh, things together. So we're focusing on sensing. So those makes us as the most, like one of the most professional digital sensing providers for bringing more sensing products. A second thing we wanted to do is to bring more things about understandings. So we wanted to convert the original resources into some more smarter or like more visualized stuff. So we wanted to make those things more connected to better help with the physical world. 
The third thing we wanted to do is about the interaction. We wanted to do some more critical information and make those critical information be easier to understand and further and better help with us in our world. Okay, so this is the quick milestone of my site, just for your reference. Okay, if you do have any questions or you do not, uh, you're not familiar with us, um, I'm really glad if you can uh, have some further questions provided to us. Okay, so now let's move on to our main focuses for today. We wanted to do is to introduce what is smart building right now based on our Marseille site concepts. So firstly, we might think about some of the conventional buildings right now. So conventional buildings are currently plagued by numerous issues, including the lack of energy efficiency, limited data collection and analysis capabilities, insufficient automation, and so on. These shortcomings often result in high cost and discomfort for residents or users. Additionally, conventional buildings frequently suffer from like problems such as some redundant work processes and decreased productivity. Consequently, it has become imperative to transition towards small buildings and that address these challenges and offer enhanced energy efficiency, advanced data analytics, improved automation, and superior occupant comfort and to help with overall optimize the cost and bring further like productivity to help with bringing more green outcomes. So here are some statistics we have done from the market research. We find out there are some of the insightful projections. This transition to smart buildings is not only crucial, but also highly rewarding. So smart buildings have exhibited like substantial like potentials and are experiencing rapid growth in the market non-residential buildings in particular. So as we can see right here, they are in urgent need of transformative changes that can unlock a plethora of opportunities within the building industry. According to market forecasts, the smart building market is expected to surge from its current valuation of $80 billion in 2022 to an estimated $329 billion by 2029. This substantial projected growth highlights the immense scope and potential for businesses venturing into the smart building sector. So considering the remarkable market potential and the numerous benefits offered by smart buildings, uh, it becomes evident that shifting towards this innovative approach is advantageous for both companies and the overall development of the building industry. So uh, reliable statistic emphasizes the need to for, for some significant changes in conventional buildings, particularly to achieve greener outcomes. There are four main aspects where improvements can make a substantial difference. Firstly, addressing indoor environment management is crucial. Monitoring indoor air quality and integrating it with cooperative systems like HVAC system or lighting system can lead to effective management of both the environment and energy consumption, resulting in greener outcomes. Secondly, implementing direct energy efficiency control is vital. With lightning system consuming a significant portion of energy, um, an efficient management system is essential to reduce wastage and minimize the environmental impact. Furthermore, optimizing space and the resource distribution and improving the staff management can eliminate redundant work, streamline the operations, and enhance efficiency. Properly managing public spaces, such as the restrooms, 
are not only to improve the overall workflow, but also increases energy efficiency and customer certifications. In conclusion, taking action in these areas will bring tangible green outcomes for conventional buildings by carefully managing the indoor like environment, con controlling the energy consumption, and do all of those operations, we can simultaneously improve the overall comfort and productivity to bring and contribute more to our shared green future. And MAUSE introduces some advanced solution, and we will be talking about something further. So these are some of the very important and value-added characters we might have for all of those things in our smart buildings, such as informatization, humanization, energy saving, intelligence, as well as visualization, facilitation, and uh, being highly integrated. That is because while we are doing those things together, we can make those data to work for you. So you might be able to collect the data and to monitor the space or monitor the specific area you might have problems. So in these cases, you might be able to integrate the existing systems or existing devices together. Okay, so now I think this is the most important part I'm going to talk for today. That is about all of the solution as well as those devices we're going to talk for today. So in this part, I will be presenting the integrated product portfolio with the latest technologies and great highlights to enable some smart buildings management. Moreover, actually, we will be bringing some further products and we will be having a new sharing with all of you who are joining us today since we are going to launch our the second half of year new products just in the next week. OK. So first of all, let's see. Uh, during this project, during this presentation, I will be doing some like showcase of MAUSITE's comprehensive things and to address the key challenges in achieving like sustainable and energy efficient operations. So like you can see in the, this picture, this is the very quick topology and just to show some of the cases which might have in MAUSITE smart building stuff. So in these cases, when we will think about we are bringing some new technologies, enabling managing different separate spaces in our buildings, such as what we mentioned, like in your workplace, which you might need is to better to manage the space occupancy for better distributing your resources. And for example, for the smart restroom, you might want to know like some of the outdoor situation or the environment, like the uh, I indoor air quality stuff. And others, like you are in the overall building, you might want to know further about the energy efficiency side. So with not only those uh, digital sensing devices, we will also be provided some stable connectivity for you to use to collect and to receive this data and help you to further connect it with our IoT platform or the third party platform as well for better achieving the overall integrated solution. So let's see the first part. So this part I'm going to talk about it's about uh, all about the environment things in our indoor air quality stuff. So for this uh, uh, series of products, where main focus our main focuses is to bring in a better air quality management system, enabling doing some further connection with other LoRaWAN based devices or other IoT based devices at the same time. 
In this part, we're bringing different options for you, like to do with different parameters of detection, such as you will be able to receive like three in one indoor air quality sensor, seven in one or nine in one indoor air quality sensor, enabling bringing more professional uh, indoor air quality uh, parameters detection. In this stuff, the, not only the things you can do is to get those detection things. The second important thing and the main important thing is to bring more collective data for you for some further analysis. In, for example, you will be able to collect the time period of data in this uh, area for helping with distributing other sources like your cleaning stuff, like your management, or do some further uh, redistribution of this specific area. Furthermore, like I mentioned in the beginning, you can also be able to connect with the other systems. Let me do a quick explanation right here. We allow those IoT devices to talk to each other. They can basically very clearly and directly to connect to each other. In these cases, while you detect some of the parameters has reached the threshold, you will be able to set some if condition. Uh, and for example, you if you detect the temperature reaches the threshold, you will be able to help with turn on or turn off, such as your HVAC system, enabling doing the overall integrated management. In this new second half of year roadmap, we will also be bringing our new product, enabling managing the HVAC system. This is about the thermostat, which can just connect with our other devices to do the overall detection together. So this is about our visualized environments by statistic and enable the indoor air quality management as well. Feel free to let me know your questions so we can let you know, like if you further talk about your concerns. Um, besides, there are more options of the indoor air quality sensors with different like scenarios. Sometimes you might not need to have the visualization things because you do not need the like the screen. You might choose from the screen version or non-screen version also. All right. So let me continue the next part. So this part is about the space utilization potential. We wanted to bring further things enabling doing a better occupant management. For example, we prefer to have those, like what I mentioned, we prefer to separate or distribute those space resources better, enabling doing the better management stuff. So first of all, our AI workplace occupancy sensor BS121, that one is a LoRaWAN based and allows for wireless deployment and that will be mounted on the ceiling and it will enable you to do the occupancy detection in this area, such as in the meeting room. So because I mentioned we will allow for some integrated solution and integrated connection together, that would be able to allow it to connect with other systems, for example, your lightning system, while it detects the meeting room is occupied, so uh, it occupied or it's uh, it's vacant. While it's vacant, the condition this is a condition. And that will uh, make it to, to, for example, to release the lighting system to turn off your line or something. So that will be better help you to do the overall energy efficiency control. Furthermore, you might find this is a big problem for finding a weekend meeting room or finding a space to work. So that one would allow you to find it easier while connecting with your system. For example, the booking system, we allow it to, for example, to release or book a meeting room in that place. Further things like the second one, the VS340 and VS341, that actually is our new launching product in this season. So this series of products based on our market research, 
we find out this is very important thing to do is we wanted to detect and we wanted to know the desktop or desk like working station status of the occupancy status. So in these cases, we wanted to know like if, for example, like those uh, employees who have got the hybrid working style, will they be able, uh, is, is somebody in the company or staying at home for today? So that will be able for you to know by doing those working station management system. Another thing is we wanted to collect the data by collecting and analysis those data, we will be able to better distribute the empty spaces or you are not that frequently used spaces. We can change those uh, free working stations to other functions in helping with managing the overall resource better. Furthermore, our AI top people counting sensor Actually, this one could be utilized in the indoor, like in the gate places and in buildings. And furthermore, there are also some of the supermarkets or shopping malls. They might require this kind of stuff for helping with them to count the overall people flow statistics. This one has adopted the most advanced AI and top technologies with up to 99.8% actual high accuracy rate with 100% anonymous detection. And there are some further functions of it enabling doing the distribution of the detecting areas. While you have this kind of uh, coming sensor in your building, you might be able to further managing the overall people flow or the crowdedness of the specific area. So that might enable you to do in the better and more professional management. The last one is another very simple sensor which has equipped it with PIR and the light. And that enables the cooperation with the occupancy status by detecting the motion of people and the lightning status by detecting like the environment is that on the night or it's daytime or nighttime to enable it to control your lightning system. So all of those four different um, devices right here are in uh, order to do some further space occupancy detection and help with better occup um, better distribute your resource as well as collecting further statistics for your reference. Another one we wanted to talk further about it is about the smart restroom solution. In these cases, especially in some commercial buildings, public restrooms, you might find there are several issues and requires to do some further um, applications and to do some further change, especially, for example, for some hotels and for some of the very commercial buildings. And this enables them to do, the first thing is to do the guest detection. This one is a specific outdoor detector, especially for the restroom spaces. That allows for detecting two most frequently seen uh, outdoors in your smart restrooms and help with to along those cleaning staff to manage it uh, at the time. And the second thing is our VS330. And that one is mostly used for those cubicles inside of our restrooms to see if there will be somebody in there is that occupied or not and connecting with the managing system to let those people who wanted to go to the uh, restroom to see, oh, is that crowded or is that free to go or something like that. And this is ultra like 100% anonymous detection. In the, it adopts the PIR and top technology uh, for better balancing its like, function and uh, its working time. So the battery life would be allows it for doing the battery powered. So that would be better for utilizing in the restroom. 
Another one is the Smart Field Level Monitoring Sensor WS201. This one is specifically designed for some of the uh, cases, like some diver boxes, and for those boxes, you want to know the filling level of those uh, like tissue stuff, in, especially in those uh, smart restroom places. Furthermore, we will be bringing a new one uh, sensor that enables doing the fuel level, but that is for the soap dispenser one, because we have received a lot of market demand if this one could be able to do the detection of the soap dispenser. But this one didn't allow it, but we have already have one which would be allowed for doing that soap dispenser level detection. Okay, also we'll be bringing in the second half of year new roadmap in next week. The last one is the mini leak detection sensor WS303. Um, for this one, it's very a uh, small compact size and you can put it on anywhere you wanted to put it in. And that would be very easy to do the detection only with the props on the bottom places to do the detection and overall battery power with the long battery life. This will enable you to do some uh, specific area detection of the water leakage. So this one would be the smart restroom solution enabling doing the overall resource efficiency management. The last one would be our energy uh, efficiency part enabling just specifically to our lightning systems. And this product, such as our light controller, that will be able to control up to eight lightning circuits and would allow for miles ID to d communication. So for all of those switches you can see and sockets, they all support the miles ID 2 d Just quickly uh, explain this function. That might enable those uh, like lightning controlling uh, devices with cooperating with our other devices we mentioned, such as our IEQ devices, such as our other controlling devices, those will be controlled by them to do the further connection. Like I mentioned, while it detect this room is occupied, occupied or this is vacant, you might have different conditions happen. So you can set with the specific protocol, that is the mouse and D2D protocol. So for the uh, D2D protocol, it allows for different regions. The only thing for now is that we only support the mouse and devices to do the mouse and D2D right now, because that is the directly protocol with mouse and devices, which has already support device to device. Uh, no, doesn't matter like which area you are in or something like that. That works, okay? So this one would be, um, I think might be easier to understand. If you have any questions, please let me know, okay? All right, so the last part about here is about our uh, security side. So in buildings, you might worry about there might be some wastage uh, and also there would be some loss there by doing some, because of some emergency situations such as our gas detector that will be enabling doing the um, retardant gas detection to warn you if there would be some emergency happens and magnetic contact switch help with you to management the situation of, especially for your door or window and the others like the water leakage detector for doing the specific area water leakage detection. And the last one, the smart button, with only one button, but it can allow for further connection with other systems to do the, for example, the connection with your shadows, with your shades, and this connection with your lightning system, a connection with the other, like the other devices. Besides all of those devices, we allow the mouse IoT cloud to further manage those data. 
And here I wanted to do something uh, to do a just a quick sneak peek of the new cloud system we will be bringing in this year. We will be bringing a brand new cloud system which will replace our existing IoT cloud. Uh, that means we will just cancel it, but that means we will have some further added function to it to make it more integrated. And so please um, just wait for our new uh, H2 roadmap and we can further talk about the new cloud system which we'll be having for uh, this year. So the others right here, I just wanted to quickly mention because we have some, I think I, it's almost the time right here just to let you know all of those things, they can be benefit from those small building equipment and you can find those specific solution by combining with different devices together, enabling to doing the better building management. So these are some of the further things like we can do the facilitation as well as the integration. And here are some of the highlights based on LoRaWAN technology, which I wanted to highlight. So maybe you have already been very familiar with, since I've already introduced some of the devices, such as the long battery life, uh, high coverage, and uh, ultra uh, like deep indoor penetration stuff. That all that are all based on the connectivity. So in those functions, we will be able to do those devices to do the communication, not only by the LoRaWAN gateways, but also by device to device directly, like we mentioned the mouse ID 2D communication. They can do the direct control by combining with our, for example, our buttons with the uh, sockets or switches to do the lightning control stuff, okay? Besides mouse size uh, connectivity, our gateways are currently supporting the backnet for doing the real-time date and to do the integration into the existing building management system and to do the further operation to make that easily. Okay, so here are some further introduction of our technologies. So I think maybe I will just leave those information right here because I have introduced some of our devices. So that will be some extra information for all of you who wanted to know further about those technologies, okay? Uh, besides, I wanted to highlight is our smart building kit for doing a quick sampling and to do a try of the smart building stuff management, as well as doing some further communication with all of those devices. Just try it with the full integrated solution together. So here are some real cases of mouse site smart building solutions. This is about the IEQ monitoring, and this enables some further management of the environment, especially for the classrooms of the buildings. Another thing is we have real statistics of saving energy and to bring the energy efficiency for specific buildings with sensors that can bring the real uh, saving from your energy by those uh, connection system and the communication system, it can be better managing the overall energy uh, settings, like to do the further distribution of the energy resource and so on. The last thing we wanted to talk is what we have done by doing the resource management because some of the resources we have wasted will cost more uh, like more more money or more efforts or more like human powers so this might be better if you can manage those resources better like your storage like something like the water leakage to maintain your appliance and so on. Okay, so I think those are almost all the things we wanted to talk about today. And I think I'm going to answer some of the questions right here. So 
Mm, so here are some questions. Let me quickly see that. The first thing, is it possible to convert LoRaWAN data to BACnet data through UG65? That's right. So we have already, uh, this is already compatible with UG65, UG556, which we mostly recommended for the smart building use cases. That is available. All right, another question. Uh, there would be some further things about the uh, certification of the gas detector. I will be typing the answer for you and to let you further reference that, okay? If there are any other questions left yet, I think I can type those questions because I think I have got like, uh, I have already over the time to do the presentation. So please type in all your questions and now I'm going to answer the questions in the question box for you, okay? So now let me switch to uh, our authorized IoT partner, Unibase, from switch the sharing to Jonathan, okay? All right, hi everyone. Uh, this is Jonathan, all right. Uh, our uh, partner of uh, Mouseite. So, uh, okay, let me just get a slide ready and then I shall share. Oh, I forgot for disable hosting. Mm. Hi, all, right. all right. So I hope you can see the slide. All right. Okay, all good. Okay, let me begin. Okay, let me share. Well, okay, who who is uh who are we? Um, Unibis is a IoT company. We started about seven years back. Uh, as a startup. Uh, but in the course of the seven years, we have grown quite rapidly. And uh, right now we have roughly uh we operate in six countries with sales in seventy countries around the world. Uh, headquartered in Singapore. And uh, also a significant number is that to date, we have connected about 12 million sensors around the world. All right. So uh, spanning over 70 countries. Most of these uh, sensors are all IoT on low power by area network running on this network called Sigfox. All right. Uh, as you might know, uh, Unibis bought over Sigfox network all right, uh, last year. Sigfox is a uh, similar network to LoRa. But the thing is, although we own Sigfox, uh, but we have also believed very strongly in conversion, which means to say we 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 uh op, we we like to bring in com, uh solutions that works for the customer. In our recent years, our recent uh, months, we get to know uh Mouseite and uh with the LoRa sensors, uh LoRaWAN sensors, and we believe uh the thing is uh is very good for many of the customer usage. And we have been promoting and selling a lot of the uh, mouse site sensors on LoRaWAN as well. Okay, let's move on on sustainable. Uh, okay, the, to this message. All right, we we believe uh, a lot in providing solution in the sustainability in the green building and the facility management space because uh, this is right now we see uh, as a solution provider, uh, customer is coming to us because of increasing carbon tax in the next many years. Uh, also driven by energy costs as high, uh, customer need to do ESG reporting, carbon footprint, and also green funding, right? And we know that a building constitute a very heavy toll on the build, uh, on the carbon, in that roughly 30 to 40% of energy consumption at greenhouse come from buildings. So we can make a, a saving in a building, uh, it will be very significant. And uh, coming from, I, I come from Singapore, uh, from Asia. All right, I know the audience today is quite a wide range of people. So if we look at even just within uh, Southeast Asia, all right, uh, every country is now moving more and more into various regulation 
to pull in carbon uh to 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 for sustainability all right uh so it's uh, so you really spend it across the uh different uh, countries and specifically in Singapore we have also the 80 80 uh goals all right 80 percent great building should be green all right and whereby 80 percent new development should be super low energy and 80 percent improvement from all the old buildings and of course there are many matrices in there and in the matrices to retrieve green building you can see the indoor air quality is also a critical element. So uh, in the Building and Construction Authority, Singapore standards, uh, there is really a lot of things laid out for what is the green mark uh, standards. A little bit similar to LEEDs, all right? Uh, but this is a Singapore standard, which also been deployed in several other countries. So uh, many uh, standards have been raised in there. So a lot of it, as you can see, uh, is uh, they highlight uh, energy consumption, what monitoring, benchmarking, and so forth. Indoor air quality is also a big thing in the green marks uh, measurements, all right, both for audit as well as continuous improvement. And lastly, also in the build for maintainability guide, uh, so things like submetering, smart washroom, uh, waste management, okay, all these are spelled out as requirement for green building and build design for uh, maintainability. So, so these are actually where the demand driver comes about. And where do Unibis then comes in to help? When we, of, when we meet our customers, uh, we actually offer to them a wide range array of different kinds of sensors to achieve this. So this one slide here you can see is a really a, 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 a wide variety. And uh, uh, we, we start to work in Mouseite because Mouseite, we are impressed with their uh, range of sensors. All right. And not only that, Mouseite actually produce a lot of new sensors almost every month. And we also with a very aggressive roadmap. So by working in Mouseite, we are able then to have a wide range of sensors to offer to our customers and to really deliver a lot of solutions. And so, so as such, we feel that this is, uh, uh, is a very good partner and uh, we are able to go to the customers. And of course, when customers come to us, uh, we, what we offer them is a full solution all right, of deployment. And of course, uh, usually the customer are less bothered with uh, the type of network, the bus, uh, what kind of sensors and all the, and all the details. And, uh, but what they like to hope is they come to us and we actually can offer them a very wide range of stuff. And we know how to propose and the right solution on the right network with the right sensors. And of recent years, we actually been shifting a lot more and more and more to, to mount site sensors. And then because we, we find that it has a wide variety. So customer, they may need things like PRR, they may need smart scene, they may need occupancy, paper counter, dashboards, switch, uh, soccer, call button, occupancy center, indoor air quality, sound and gas and water metering. So that one was actually a lot, this a lot of these are for sustainability and wellness. And of course, Beside that, customers also look uh, to us to help them in the building, facility, environment, and operation. So the more back-end thing to asset, to manage the empower optimization and also the assets and resource uh, lifelong. So things like uh, uh, leak detection, rodents, uh, soil moisture, uh, uh, level sensors, um, motion detector in uh, uh, waste level bin and so forth. So these are also sense, a lot of these uh, can be provided by Mouseite. And we are very happy that actually uh, things are, we can able to integrate them together. On top of that, there's also a smart washroom. Customer actually, Singapore deployed a lot of this. Uh, in, in, uh, we deployed in uh, hundreds of buildings on this. All right, so uh, it's a wide variety of sensors for the washroom. So with it, it means in all of this uh, 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 IoT solution we put in is to help the customer optimize the utilization of manpower in cleaning so that you don't keep needing to send people to do the cleaning on a regular basis, but it become on demand. So based on X number of people is there, then you send the cleaner there. And the cleaner don't need to check on the waste bin, they don't need to check on the toilet paper and so forth, right? So all this could be managed by a uh, little sensors and uh, then cleaner is sending to help only when necessary, all right? So all this, and, and beyond the sensors, the thing is, we are then putting them together onto a data-driven facility management uh, uh, system. All right. So in other words, within the building, there are many different kind of application, waste, cleaning, washroom, uh, pest control, 
uh, uh, indoor air quality, facility booking, lighting, carbon footprint, energy, and so forth. So different system all come in. There are different applications in there. And uh, the sensor that we work here, actually a lot can be supporting many of these functionalities. And then the customer can put them all onto a software, uh, usually a, a CMMS, which is a customer maintenance and management system to manage by buildings. And in fact, uh, of recent years, uh, more and more people are looking at having a common platform to cut across multiple buildings into a aggregated facility management. And what IoT sensor does is able to do the data sensing so that we can send help when necessary. And actually with the data, we are actually helping the customer to monitor trends, analysis, and from then on, able to help them further optimize all right, their operation and their workflow. All right, so this one slide here shows how it's typically, typically done. All right, so it's actually a three-step process, as we mentioned. So we, need, we can monitor the consumption of energy, for example, uh, energy and water. And uh, this is very much needed oftentimes for uh, uh, Singapore Green Mark or for the LEEDs and, uh, and, and all the various certification. So by monitor the consumption, we're able then to set the benchmarking, we're able to send the carbon footprint report. And thereafter, the data can be given, can be sent into an AI engine to analyze the data. And then the, the software can then make the necessary recommendation to the end user to see how to the act to, to adjust the air conditioning, to adjust the building performance. And then this data can keep moving. And this loop can keep going continuously. So there's always constant improvement. There are many, pro there are different ways to, to solve, to, to execute this. Some of the time we use, um, for some customers, we do a very simple, basic software just for reporting. For some customer, we do a, 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 a um, events-based uh, 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 data flow stuff whereby whereby we, we uh, it's a rule-based system. So based on number of people in there, based on the presence of people, based on the temperature inside and outside the building, we can readjust the aircon. Or we can, there's also, a, for customer who is reading, we can also put in the machine learning AI tool so that it's constantly looking at the data, the data every 15 minutes and sending commands and adjustment of the aircon every 15 minutes. So it's a constant tuning of the aircon continuously. And over time, when you do a system like that, all right, uh, you're able then to save the energy between anywhere between 10 to 30 or 30 percent, all right, depending on how the building is run. But all this uh is um would only be very much optimized when we are able to put in IoT sensors to collect more data and so that we can have more accurate adjustment. All right. So this is a typical uh, data collection and BMS whereby we actually use uh, a low power wide area network sensors, send it uh, normally sent via Sigfox or LoRa. In, in Mount side case, it will be predominantly, it will be all LoRa. All right, so things like indoor air quality, CO2, energy, water metering, environment sensors, motion sensors, all these are the data we collect. And normally we put them onto a common platform and then this data can then be used to control the BMS or to send it to another software services to do the AI and ML. Then thereafter, the machine, they can then use it to control the building, all right? So this is quite a typical setup we do. Um, there's no women, there's no, we, and all of these are done using IoT sensors. Of course, having sensors by itself is not new. Um, for the longest time, there have always been sensors. But in the old days, many sensors are non-IoT, which means they are manual there. Uh, people had to record the data manually. Or uh, there's also wired sensors that's also quite uh, available for many of the BMS provider. Uh, but I think the new trend right now is to use wireless sensors uh, and wireless data uh, devices. So I know this is usually done. Uh, we, we, we love doing it using uh, LP1 network, which is a low power wide area network. All right. So uh, in mouse side case, we use a lot. We, we do it on low run network. So what is special about this low run network? Uh, it, because uh, on the on this LPM because it is very yeah long it is low power which means the sensor can last a very long time. All right. Uh, if you uh, a normal and uh, if you if you put an iPhone, probably last a day. Uh, but at a, a low power, an LP one sensors can last easily, uh, two years, three years, or even up to five years. And uh, the longer the battery lasts, uh, the lo lower your cost because the customer do not need to replace battery. All right. And also customer do not need any to spend expensive installation work on the wired stuff. Uh, so it's 
minimum disruption to the customers. All right. And also because this are all private network, it means that we can ensure that in the, the uh, customer uh, sensors have uh, radio uh, uh, network coverage in all parts of the building where it is services. So when we deliver solutions like the, this, we actually plan, we do a network planning, we look at the building and set up and we actually lay out a, a LoRa network for them as well. So as such, they are guaranteed a network. All right. Whereas if you use a public networks, uh, sometimes uh, uh, in a lot of places deep indoors or underground, yeah, you might not get a network uh, in there and you'll get stuck. All right. So uh, this is where I think uh, we, we deploy a lot of this on LPWAN. So I'm going to share with you some of the projects we do in Singapore. All right. Uh, Singapore is a tiny island, uh, but we done, but it is uh, one way so advanced in that you deploy a lot of solutions. We have deployed about hundreds of buildings across Singapore. And this is a snapshot of the kind of building uh, solution we do. Uh, some in shopping malls, some in residential, hospitals, uh, educate universities, polytechnics, industrial building, as well as public uh, buildings, uh, government building in spaces. All right. So it's a very wide spectrum of a different kind of installation that we do. All right. And uh, most of this, uh, we work uh, is uh, we deploy things like metering solution, smart washroom solution, uh, as well as indoor air quality, which is actually a big trend today. All right. So if you'd like to see well, some example of the project we do, this is one project we did earlier on for a unit, uh, a polytechnic, uh, it's called Tamase Poly. We deploy about 3,000 sensors across the entire all campus. So every single room have temperature, humidity, and motion sensor. So data like this is gathered and is sent to the uh, digital twins. So the customer is able then to look at the temperature settings and motions and people counting. From there, they can then optimize the air conditioner system. So with it, uh, they're able then to bring in uh, immediate uh, energy saving because uh, uh, because of these motion sensors, all right? All right, because previously, uh, if somebody's booked a room, then the aircon is on automatically. But what if nobody is there? Or what if the, the room booking is not done properly, then uh, whereby it's, and nobody is insufficient number of people. So with data, you're able then to adjust accordingly. All right. Uh, we also see a very big trend towards indoor air quality monitoring. Uh, we deploy quite a lot of these with mouse side sensors and a lot more to come. And we do see a lot of big deals coming up front uh, uh, on boarding. Uh, for uh, uh, mouse side indoor air quality sensor, especially the nine one one, all right. So the uh, for example, in this ex uh, we do one projects recently in the next shopping center NEX there, whereby uh, we work with Honeywell, all right. So we install in the uh, LoRa sensors throughout on indoor air quality, and with that we know what is the level of CO two inside the building, all right. So by knowing the level of CO two in the building. We are then able to adjust the aircon. All right. So you see, the thing is, um, if you want wellness, you want uh the the your tenants in the retail space to be comfortable, then the level of CO2 should be low. But so you need to refresh the air more often. But the thing when you refresh the air very often, energy consumption will go up. All right. So it is you need then we need to then see what is the optimum level of user comfort in CO2 and also energy optimized usage. So by having sensors on the ground throughout the entire mall, we're then able to gather this data and be able to then send command to the Honeywell BMS to then adjust uh, the, the usage accordingly. So the customer can then balance between the two. All right. Uh, we, we, are, we, we started doing projects like this last year and we're going to see they're actually going more and more of this is going to come in the next many years to come. And we're very optimistic of doing this all right, together in Mount side. We also, uh, things like also, because of green mark, all right, there's a lot of requirement for uh, energy submetering. So these are some of the projects we do. So you can see they're all sensors plugged onto the uh, switch board, whereby we're able then to collect the data and be able to send wirelessly, all right. Uh, recently, we also do a project using uh, mouse site uh, for indoor quality, as well as water and electrical metering. And this will be one of the Singapore uh, LEEDS project uh, certification yeah, that we should be awarded very soon. So the project just about gone live just this month. All right. So smart washroom, uh, just want to mention, uh, this is uh, many of the projects we do here. So with it, we are able then to monitor real-time alerts on what are the usage of the washroom through sensors. 
And then from then we were to send alerts to the custom uh, the cleaners to do the cleaning. Only, but so the cleaners do not need to come all the time, but only when necessary. And they only uh, be able then to uh, uh, they don't need to check on all the utilization, but all this done on sensors. So the cleaner just coming to do the real work, running and running around. So with that, uh, customer actually save uh, uh, a very high percentage of manpower, all right, usage cost. So uh, in summary, why, why do you think that a customer may want to work with Unibis for facility management? All right, the reason is because we offer a very wide array of different sensors for the customer, comprehensive range. And uh, by recently working in Mao site, uh, our range of sensors actually increased many, a, a lot more. And uh, we're very pleased with that because that offers us a lot more capability. And do we, we do see that Mao site will continue to grow. Uh, and also, we, we are very strong in Singapore headquarters here. And, and uh, we also have a solution partner in roughly 70 countries across the world. So if there are any projects around in Asia, all right, and Europe and so forth, uh, even Latin America, all right, we, are, we, we can actually look at it and we can actually use uh, uh, harness the, our local partners to help design and deploy the solutions. So the designing work can be done by Singapore because we are very uh, experienced in mouse set sensors. All right, but the deployment and installation and so forth, we can utilize our local partners. All right. And the thing is, uh, IoT is actually about sensors, network, platform, and software. So we have uh we have deployed to and it's, it's not easy because you need to put all four together. So uh we have done a roughly 12 million sensors around the world. All right, so that actually gives us a lot of experience, and we also learn a lot of uh, lessons, and we also see where the pitfall and mistakes. And so, and so these are actually deployment and planning and designing skills that we learn that we actually is able then to offer our customer or good partners in the audience here. So that together, I think we can then uh, hopefully deliver much bigger projects with less uh, deployment issue and also more successful ones so that we can grow together. So I really look forward to work with uh, partners here in the, in the audience together at Mouseite to be able to deliver good projects together. All right. So I think it's important that we do IoT, the IoT in IoT. Why IoT is for building is because what get measured get done. All right, by putting in sensors, then we are able to gather data, and with the data, we are then able to do the uh, action as well as optimization. All right. So thank you so much. This is my contact. Uh, this slide also be given to you if you want to reach out to us. Uh, feel free to scan your QR code or with the email there, and uh, we can then uh get in touch later. Thank you.